Welcome back to a brand new video. I was going to record my NFL Week 5 recap pod today, but some breaking news happened. The Jets fired Robert Sala. Another move that the Jets have made that shows their incompetence, their organizational dysfunction, instability, and impulsiveness. If you are going to fire Robert Sala, do it before the season. Now the Jets are scrambling. They named Jeff Ulbrich to be the interim head coach. And I'm a fan of Jeff Ulbrich, back, dating back to when he was in Atlanta. I'm a fan of Jeff Ulbrich. He was highly coveted to be the defensive coordinator for the 49ers. He has been the defensive coordinator for the Jets. The players love him. And I think because he is in the building, the defense will still be very, very good. That's number one. The offensive failures, the offensive incompetence, this firing doesn't solve those issues. Now, yes, can Jeff Ulbrich oversee the offense more than Robert Sala did? Absolutely. That's still a wait and see. We have to see if we get some more offensive results. But right now, the Jets can't block up front. Brees Hall is getting no favors from his offensive line, and he's not making things happen on his own, to be fair. And if we don't get Devontae Adams, I don't trust this receiving group on a game-to-game -game basis. The Jets are a player-led organization right now, and at the top of it is Aaron Rodgers, who seemingly controls every decision the Jets have made since he's gotten to the team. Alan Lazard gets signed. Is that a coincidence? No. Tim Boyo gets signed. Is that a coincidence? No. I'm surprised we haven't signed David Bakhtiari yet. Maybe it's because he doesn't want to play no more. Because if he did, he'd be on the Jets. Nathaniel Hackett, after the Jets had the worst offense in the NFL last year, still keeps his job? Oh, boy. Is that a coincidence? No, it's not. Aaron Rodgers is his buddy. Players have been frustrated with the offense since last year. Aaron Rodgers wasn't able to wave his magical wand and fix it all because the problems still persist. But the first person that gets canned is Robert Sala. It's an embarrassment. The Jets' offense this year ranked 22nd in EPA per play. Their defense ranks 5th. The defense wasn't an issue. They haven't played some amazing offenses, to be fair. And against good offenses, I thought the Jets' defense struggled a lot outside of the Minnesota game. But when Aaron Jones went out is when the Jets' defense started to play well. While Aaron Jones was in the game, the run defense looked abysmal. The offense is the number one issue. It's the number one concern. If we trade for Devontae Adams, I think it alleviates it somewhat because now you can play more hero buddy ball. And that's the only way this offense can have any success because you can't count on Nathaniel Hackett to design anything clever and make it easy for the offense and get our playmakers the ball. You can't count on it. Robert Sala, like I said, I'm not a Robert Sala apologist. I don't think he's a good NFL head coach. One thing's for damn sure, he is going to be a major upgrade to a team's defensive staff if he chooses to go that route this season or he wants to take a break this season and, and go join someone's staff next year. He'll be an upgrade to their defensive staff. The Jets were an undisciplined football team under him, top five in penalties since he became the head coach in 2021. But this all falls back on Aaron Rodgers. Woody Johnson said this was his decision, but he's not going to come out and say, yeah, you know, Aaron Rodgers was the catalyst behind this firing. He's not going to say that. I think what was even more ridiculous, I don't know what reports to believe. There's some reports that are saying that Robert Sala was escorted out by security from the building. What's worse? I, I mean, you why'd you let him in the building anyway if you just had plans of firing him? He's in the building getting prepared for Buffalo, and you make this decision? This is why I don't think it was a Woody Johnson decision. Because if he was so ticked off, if he was so pissed about losing that game in London, 
you'd fire Robert Sala right after the game. You wouldn't even let him get into the office on Monday and Tuesday morning. But what I think happened is that Woody Johnson talked to Joe Douglas, to Aaron Rodgers, and they all collectively agreed on a solution. And that was firing Robert Sala, but keeping Nathaniel Hackett, which is beyond me. I hated that this move came at this time because Bill Belichick was out there in the offseason. Mike Vrabel was out there in the offseason. Hell, Dan Quinn was out there in the offseason. And look at what he's doing with Washington with the less talented roster. Dan Quinn bringing in Cliff Kingsbury. They have changed Washington with Adam Peters. The best organizations at the top aren't player-led. They're GM and head coach led the Detroit Lions Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell the 49ers John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan the Vikings Kwesi and KOC the list goes on the Jets I don't even know if I'm sure that Joe Douglas is calling all the shots right now who's calling all the shots is Aaron Rodgers he clearly was not vibing with Robert Sala based on how he shoved his hug away Thursday night against the Patriots, based on how the offensive line had a ton of penalties against the Broncos because of his cadence. And then after the game, he says, you got to hold those players accountable. Well, who's the person that needs to hold him accountable, Aaron? We all know who he's talking about. The Jets season isn't over, and this is what I want to finish off this video with. The sky is falling right now. They just fired their head coach, but I think we can all agree, and this is the double standard that I don't understand. Everybody universally agrees that Robert Sala is not a good head coach, right? Nobody thought that with Robert Sala, the Jets were going to get out this hole. So now the Jets try to find a solution and fire Robert Sala, and now take a chance on an unknown in Jeff Ulbrich, who could be bad, could be all right, or could change the season. And now it's, oh, everybody's out on the Jets. I understand why. It's a dysfunctional organization. There's no doubt. There's also no doubting that this is a very talented roster. And if they trade for Devontae Adams, it gets even more talented. This upcoming week, they face the Buffalo Bills at home. If they beat the Bills, they are first place in the AFC East, and they have one of the 10 easiest schedules moving forward. If the defense keeps playing well and the offense starts to find some life, this is a playoff team. Now, do I trust the coaching to take us further and compete for a championship? No. But do I think the playoffs are realistic? Yes. But ultimately, with championship expectations coming into this season, this is a lost season because of the organizational incompetence, because the organization, instead of leaving the decisions to the football decision makers and the higher ups, put their future in the hands of Aaron Rodgers. There's only certain guys that have that pull. Tom Brady was one of them. Peyton Manning was one of them. But guess what? When they went to new situations, they had great head coaches. Peyton Manning gave the Broncos multiple years to figure it out. Couldn't do it with John Fox. But then you bring in Gary Kubiak. With Tom Brady, he went to Tampa Bay. Bruce Arians is a hell of a head coach. There was organizational structure there. And that's why post Tom Brady, the Buccaneers are still successful. They won their division. They might win it again this year. But Aaron Rodgers came to the Jets, and I don't even blame him too much because the Jets are so desperate for good quarterback play that they said, here, Aaron, do anything you want. We will co-sign anything. 
and he's just pulling them around, making them do whatever they want. He's like a puppet master. If there is no structure at the top, there's going to be no success at all in, with anything meaningful, which is AFC Championship, Super Bowl, it's not going to happen. Very talented team. They had a chance to address that organizational incompetence in the offseason by hiring a coach that is proven to have a structure. Bill Belichick, Mike Vrabel, and they failed to do so. Even taking a chance on Ben Johnson, who I know he decided to stay in Detroit, but you never know if the Jets job was available. Maybe he comes to the Jets. I don't know how any coach wants to come and coach the Jets. This was an impulsive decision. If you were going to fire Robert Sala, you do it before the season. And now all we can do is see what happens next. Will Jeff Ulbrich change the way we game plan offensively week to week? That's a wait and see. One thing is certain, though. Robert Sala, despite this being an impulsive move, was not a good NFL head coach. Maybe this was the better. Maybe this was for the worse. We're all about to find out.